Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the enhancement I used in creating my custom metahuman, Albert Einstein. From feature film to mobile. If you're interested in learning about my animation rig or high fidelity depth, change metahuman head through importing conformed mesh. Why this method of head transformation is truly remarkable. Of course, you can't create any head with it, but most normal human heads can be created absolutely accurately. And precision is especially important when creating likeness, such as when making a 3D twin or digital double. The new strand-based hair system via the groom component, or how everything is tied together and animated in sequence. In the old version, when using mesh to metahuman, the head was created not really inaccurately. It seemed to be smoothed out and adjusted to fit the body. In other words, you ended up with an averaged head. Of course, it still resembled the original, but largely, it was more of a parody and resulted in more cartoonish characters. In this case, when using mesh to metahuman, you could get an approximate head with adjusted bones, which is very important for animation. To achieve the final likeness, artists employed blend shapes, which they then attempted to integrate into the head rigging system. However, the bones were not adapted to the imported blend shape. The process of adjusting the bones was arduous and time-consuming, and it was not automated. Each bone had to be manually adjusted. That's why some programmers started creating expensive plugins to modify the metahuman. But now, with the use of the import conformed mesh method, you can easily create 90% of all human characters with absolute fidelity to your original model or scan. This is just a glimpse of things to come. Plus, the bones will be perfectly aligned which won't cause any problems during animation. All right, let's delve into how this works and what sets it apart. Let's explore the capabilities of the conformed mesh method. We'll conduct an experiment. We'll select a head model with extreme shapes and intricate details. We have the flexibility to choose any head from the metahuman model we've imported into Maya. For instance, this one. Its topology and vertex numbering will suffice for our purposes. So, we'll modify the head to scrutinize the accuracy of transferring the model itself, along with the precision of fitting the bones to the imported model. Now, let's make some adjustments. First, let's modify the eye line. Then, let's elongate the nose. To test the bone structure, let's stretch the entire mouth area. We'll also alter the lips to assess their animation. Additionally, let's also change the facial plane. We'll change the eyebrow shape to test their binding with the hair. Let's also make adjustments to the neck. This is to see how the neck on our model will change in metahuman. In the previous method, the neck barely conform to the shape of the new model, as the automatic blend between the head and body primarily occurred through the neck. As is well known, metahuman comprises three standard bodies for both male and female genders, each with limited modification capabilities. Let's elongate the ears as well to see if they will smooth out. What else? Let's add a couple of subtle wrinkles for authenticity. As you can see, 
I can increase the level of detail in the model to add fine details like wrinkles or pores without affecting its usability for import into MetaHuman. Let's also outline the lips. Later, of course, we'll need to create normal maps to represent the depth of these wrinkles accurately, but the depth should also be visible on the polygonal model. And let's make AA single polygon changes too. It'll be interesting to see if these details are smoothed out and how the bones adjust to them. Let's add a spike on the forehead. And elongate a couple of polygons on the cheeks like this. After making these adjustments, we'll proceed with exporting our experimental model as an OBJ file. Next, to create a custom MetaHuman, we'll activate the plugin in Unreal Engine. After locating and activating the MetaHuman plugin, we'll restart Unreal Engine. Once that's done, we'll create a MetaHuman Identity and import our model. Since materials aren't essential, we'll deactivate them. Here's our model, the one we want to transition to MetaHuman. We'll open the MetaHuman Identity select an asset from the menu, configure components from the conformed option, and choose our head model. After a brief wait, our model will appear. Now, all that's left is to select the body and save the model. Choose Auto Rig MetaHuman Identity Skeletal Mesh Plus Full MetaHuman. Moving on, let's launch Quixel Bridge to find the newly created identity. Then, We'll start the MetaHuman modifier by clicking the Start MetaHuman button. Once the MetaHuman modifier launches in the browser, we'll see our model with its body. The transfer was quite accurate. Even the spikes we added remained unchanged. This suggests that all the details we add to our head model whether through sculpting or otherwise, will be retained in the custom MetaHuman. This is certainly reassuring. However, it's disappointing that the neck details weren't transferred and the neck thickness remained standard. Though, for testing purposes, we made it exceptionally narrow. Nevertheless, if we're crafting a character that doesn't deviate significantly from the typical human, we can employ this method to achieve a highly realistic outcome. Now, let's modify our model using the MetaHuman modifier. Let's see. The teeth are correctly positioned, and we can also move them back to their original position if necessary. As you can see, we can alter skin color, change eye color, and adjust hairstyles. Any hairstyle fits well, but if we're creating a custom MetaHuman, we should eventually create and import our unique hairstyle. Mm -hmm. 
The eyebrows are also attached to the model and adapt to its complex form. Let's add some mustache and beard. For instance, this one doesn't look quite right. Let's create something more unexpected. We can also change the body, just like the clothing. Let's dress it up. Now, let's test the animation. The animation is quite good. The facial expressions remain natural, indicating that the bones are correctly positioned. But we're still curious about the bone placement. Let's investigate further. To do so, we'll import our custom MetaHuman into Maya. We'll open Quixel Bridge and click the Download Model button then wait for the download to complete. This may take some time. There you have it. The model has finally finished downloading. Now, let's select the import command to load the model into Maya. All right, let's take a closer look at the model. Everything looks great. The model, after the facial expression changes, doesn't have any distortions or damages. All the details on the eye model, such as the tear streak and others, are in place and have good skin. Let's take a look at the bones. The bones are intact, as evident. Everything is very well fitted. The bones produce natural movements. Everything is functioning as it should. Everything is working correctly. Let's compare this model with the original model we created in ZBrush. Of course, the new model is slightly shifted and resized. Let's adjust the size. Rotate as needed and compare. The model is absolutely identical. Nothing is smoothed or altered. Only the neck was completely ignored, which is very unfortunate. So, Let's summarize. For creating lifelike, normal human likenesses, this method is excellent. It can be used to achieve absolutely accurate human models, displaying all the subtleties of their appearance. Do expensive plugins need to be used now? I think for 90% of character quality, they are unnecessary. However, for creating a completely lifelike model, especially in animation, I believe they are necessary. The thing is, this method doesn't alter the neck. You also have a choice of only three body types. You'll also need to find ways to modify the body. And most importantly, this method doesn't alter the expressive blend shapes, which some plugins are capable of. For creating a fully lifelike character, not only in a static pose but also in animation, you need to consider only the corresponding facial expressions and wrinkles. This requires creating expressive blend shapes and unique normal maps for wrinkle animation. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like.
I look forward to seeing you in the next videos.